Apeville! What's going on all you apesters out there? I am the apester himself, of course, and welcome to another edition of the Apester Show. That is right, you are hearing... My phone just went off. You are hearing that correctly, and I am not recording with my phone right now. I have my phone in my hand. Here it is. It's here. You can't see it, but it's in my hand, but... Uh, I finally got myself a mic. Now, there's a couple reasons why. Number one, I really needed a new mic. Uh, number two, uh, Spotify for Podcasters had sent out an email. They sent out an email to Spotify, so people who do Spotify for podcasting or whatever, and um, they said, oh, uh, starting, I think it's June of this year, they're going to do away with recording media with your phone, with with your phone and editing video uh, podcast episodes and all that. So I said, damn, I really have to get a mic and I wasn't going to get it right now. Cause I was in no rush, but I figured I changed the, the name of the podcast to the Apester show. So, you know, why not start this new era, if you will, with a, with a new mic, you know, leave that recording with your phone era behind and recording with the mic. You know, it's a new thing. It's the beginning of a new era. And it is recording right now as we speak. Uh, I am I am still trying to explore the the ins and outs of it. It is a, if you're wondering what kind of microphone it is, I have the paperwork here. It's a HyperX Quadcast. Uh, this usually goes for like $130. And I actually ended up getting it for 50 bucks. Open box, uh, never used uh, on eBay. And I got very lucky with it. Thank you to the seller for giving me this mic. I, like I said, I'm still exploring the ins and outs of this mic. Um, I don't know how loud, how loud to talk. I don't know how close to get to the mic. Um, yeah, that, that was probably pretty loud. I'm sorry. Um, and I'm trying to also f- figure out how on earth am I going to record my Wii videos. Because I usually record it with my phone. So I think I'm going to have to buy an Elgato. So let me go ahead and put that aside. Uh, I figured I'd make this podcast episode because, um, well, number one, I wanted to test out the mic and see if it's working great. And number two, um, I'm actually going to be talking about the press conference that happened or the WrestleMania press that, that had, took place on Thursday. I know I'm a couple days late on it. I'm sorry. I was going to upload it yesterday, but I actually ended up going out. So yeah, here I am. I'm doing it now. Um, I was actually going to do it on, Ooh, there's a baby crying in the other, the other end of the hall, um, but, um, WrestleMania, sorry, I'm looking up the thing here, so I can pull up here and see, you know, what happened at the press conference, I'm going to tell you my reaction, all that, this is, think of this as the last part of the whole what's next for Cody Rhodes thing, this is the very last part of it, and I'll give you my predictions and all that, but uh, I was going to do it Friday, but then I thought, like, oh, it's SmackDown, so why not wait until after SmackDown, so that way we can go off of that, but uh, I should have done it on Friday because uh, nothing really that eventful happened on SmackDown. Matter of fact, it was probably one of the most mediocre SmackDowns I think I actually watched. I mean, compared to like what we've seen these past few weeks with the the, the, all the Bloodline and Cody Rhodes and all that other stuff. So like compared to that, I mean, Cody wasn't on the show. Well, he was on, I think, after the show uh, got off the air. He was on after that. Um, the Rock wasn't there. Roman Reigns wasn't there. Paul Heyman was. He said that next week he would be bringing Roman Reigns and The Rock. He would be bringing them to SmackDown next week. So I'm not gonna wait till next week to review that uh, to review this po- this uh, press conference. So I'm gonna open up CBS Sports News right here, and we're gonna go ahead and review, basically, sort of review this. But the main purpose of this is to is just like a what's happening with Cody Rhodes, but basically what happened here, I'm not reading all this because, so basically the first person to come out was, uh, Bianca Belair, now before I get to that, we had, of course, the press conference was hosted by Michael Cole, um, Pat McAfee, Big E, and CM Punk, they were all there, uh, on the panel, it, it, it was pretty much felt like a kickoff show, like on a pay-per-view, it's what it felt like, there was no ring, obviously. It was just like a stage. It almost looked like the WWE Hall of Fame stage, like almost. But it was definitely in an arena. I think it was shortened down, the arena. I think it, it was it was like half of the arena. I think it was tarped off. But um, there were a lot of people there. Uh, apparently, the people in the front row had to pay to be there. So um, I'm going to have this voice recording thing opened up here just in case the recording start, uh, decides to stop on me. So... Um, 
But anywho, uh, we're going to be reviewing it. So Bianca Belair come, is the first person to come out. They they hype her up. She, you know, they have like a, a video playing of her and, and all that other good stuff. So anyway, she comes out and she's talking about WrestleMania. She doesn't know what's next for her at WrestleMania, but she does know she's going to walk in there at WrestleMania. And this is, I guess, the first time she's walking into WrestleMania without a title, apparently, or without walking out with a title or something like that. But, but that was basically the Bianca uh thing uh so the next out was Rhea Ripley Rhea Ripley came out uh after Bianca it's just Bianca had gone backstage already but uh Rhea Ripley came out and she was talking about her Wrestlemania and that she has a Wrestlemania before Wrestlemania which is uh, she's referring to Elimination Chamber she's referring to the fact that obviously it's in Australia and she is Australian she is from there so um yeah, uh, that most likely is going to be the main event for for Elimination Chamber, uh, possibly, and she's going to win. She has a match against Nia Jax for the uh, Women's World Heavyweight Championship, and Rhea Ripley better retain. I mean, that'll be a lot of heat for Nia Jax if that's the case. But um, so that takes us to the main event of this whole situation. So this takes us to the whole Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns uh bloodline seth rollins all this other the rock all this other stuff so you may be asking yourself what happened on this main event well i am going to get to that so apes phil what do you guys want to talk about do you want to talk about the fact that the rock bitch slapped cody rhodes or do you want to talk about the fact that cody rhodes chose roman reigns because that is right Roman Reigns or Cody Rhodes has chosen Roman Reigns, but before we get to that moment in time, I need to, to tell you what happened first. So obviously, uh, it was Seth Rollins that came out. They hyped them up coming out and all that. Seth Rollins came out. Um, oh, by the way, if you guys want to watch this press conference, this press meeting, this kickoff, whatever, uh, it's on Peacock and YouTube and all this other places. But anyway. Uh, so Seth Rollins comes out. Uh, he's about to int- basically about to introduce Cody Rhodes to come out, and he says, "Ladies and gentlemen, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes." And then all of a sudden, Roman Reigns music hits. Roman Reigns comes out. I thought it was so cool to see the two next to each other. Um, they weren't side by side, but they were like face to face. I thought it was really cool to see that. Roman Reigns, uh, Seth Rollins was like, "Wow, I'm, I'm actually surprised you showed up." And then Roman Reigns was like, "Wow, you're still wearing your wife's shoes." Which I thought found it pretty funny. Seth Rollins' shoes were pretty ugly, though. I will give him that. Um, they went off on each other, and then uh, eventually Roman Reigns was like, "Listen, um, I am sick of these games of Cody not choosing the opponent, whatever. So it is now up to me uh, who I choose to face at WrestleMania, and I choose The Rock." People booed him, and The Rock came out. He got a mixed reaction, uh, mostly boos, but it was. A mixed reaction, nonetheless. Uh, so the Rock comes out. He's talking about the the family tree and all that, and he pulls up a picture on the Titantron of the family tree and all this other this other nonsense. And um, he's saying all bl- uh, we're family by blood, united, whatever. So he he grabs his hand, you know, he's united with him, you know, like so, and and he's talking about all these. Cody crybabies, and he mentioned this on the Pat McAfee show, um, that he called all the people that were saying, we want Cody, we want Cody, he were he was calling Eve, every single one of us Cody crybabies. Rocky, let me tell you something, buddy, you can't just come from Hollywood and, and take all the spotlight from all the other stars that worked their asses off to get to this point, and, and I'm gonna get into that in just a little bit here. So the so the rock basically he turned heel he uh, he was a heel rock here he basically said it does not matter it doesn't matter what the the WWE universe thinks or wants or whatever he said and the crowd booed him and at this point he was a heel one half one thousand one million percent uh he was a heel so Cody comes out next and this is no music by the way he doesn't come out to music he's like he's like okay enough 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 I am sick of this bullshit. Roman, you do not get to choose who I face at WrestleMania. It is me that makes that decision. I won the Royal Rumble. The crowd goes nuts for this. He goes, at WrestleMania, the main event at WrestleMania, I choose you, Roman Reigns. And the crowd went ballistic for this. Uh, The Rock stood there side by side with Roman. He was just like, 
he had that like almost like confused look, but at the same time, like, hmm, okay. That kind of look. Uh and basically Cody Rhodes goes on and, and he and he said and he, he's talking about the, the the family tree, you know. He's talking about the family tree and he go and he basically goes, um you know, if your high chief was here, he would be ashamed of you, Roman. And the crowd was just like, ooh. And then Roman Reigns' face, he was shocked. He was just like, ooh, boy. You did not just tell me that. And then The Rock stepped up to, in front of him. Like, it's like a, it's honestly like two brothers bickering. And then here comes the father to step in front of the brother that said something he shouldn't have said. Um, So he steps, he steps up to the plate. And he's sitting there with a shocked face, a look on his face, and he, he and the Rock basically looked at Cody and he said, "Let me make something perfectly clear." Um, shit, what did he say? I, I just had a brain fart. <laughs> he basically, oh no, okay, I, I got it. Sorry, I had a brain fart just now. Uh, so he he basically said, "You do not talk about our family like that. If you ever talk about our family like that again, uh, I'm gonna fucking kill you." Basically, what he told him. And he, The Rock slapped Cody Rhodes in the face. Now, this whole angle, by the way, felt 100% real. Like, there was no storyline to this. Like, this felt like a real thing. This felt so real, you have no idea. After The Rock slapped Cody, Cody was ready to attack Rock. Seth Rollins had stepped in at one point. He's like, who the frick do you, th- who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Who the fuck you think you are? You can't. Does it doesn't mean you're above you're on the board doesn't mean it doesn't mean you can make the decisions around here and, and then the rock goes yeah 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 fuck off fuck you and, and there's all this language all this foul language that they're throwing at each other and this is almost this brawl and they're they're everybody like triple h and and, and uh was it adam pierce and nick all this were out there um basically uh before before all this happened and um they were trying they were trying to separate uh, separate the four and that could lead to a, a, a tag team match, which I will get into in just a minute. Basically, Seth, it ends with Seth Rollins saying, "Doesn't mean you're you're on top on the board. Does, doesn't mean it doesn't mean that you make the decisions around here. Doesn't mean you can just come in here and just fucking do whatever you want." And Rock goes, "Yeah, yeah, go fuck yourself." And he, he's just swearing up a storm. So that basically ended off the press. It was about an hour and fifteen minutes long. And then we go back, well, we actually go backstage before the ending of it. We go backstage to Triple H and he said, I don't know what just happened out there, but, uh, you know, it's getting tense in here and all that. And The Rock in the background is walking with Roman Reigns and he tells Triple H, he goes, Triple H, you better, you better fix this shit or I will, or we will actually. He said, we will, referring to himself and Roman Reigns. He said, uh, we will, if you don't fix this, we will. Uh, this is this is a fucking joke, and uh, he basically also said, "I'm gonna knock his teeth down his fucking throat" or something like that. And talking about uh, Cody Rhodes, he said that ne- or the next time he talks about my family like that, he's gonna get his teeth knocked out, knocked out. And he and he kept walking out. He was just fucking bullshit, and he walked out. You know, and he walked out with Roman Reigns, and then Triple H was basically like, "Yeah, I'm lucky too," or something like that. And that basically ended off the press. Okay, I know that was a lot to process. I know I said a lot just now. I basically reviewed the entire thing without stopping. So now I'm just going to give you my input on it, my take on all of this. Um, I'm not even going to be talking about the Bianca Belair, Becky Lynch. Uh, oh, by the way, Rhea Ripley came out. When Rhea Ripley came out, Becky Lynch was out there as well. saying, hey, And I, the funny line that she had said was like, like, oh, you're not going to be on top when I beat you at WrestleMania or whatever it was. I'm, I'm not, I'm, you're not going to be on top. You're going to be known as the – you're going to be on, always on the bottom or something like that. And I found that really funny. But I don't know if I brought that up already that Becky Lynch interrupted Rhea Ripley. If I, if I didn't, I apologize. But um, going back to the whole Rock, Cody, Roman situation. Um, So most of this podcast is going to be talking about – this situation now. Now, I was going to go off of as of what just happened in this press conference and then go off of SmackDown and then give you my overall review as to what I think would, was going to happen. However, SmackDown, nothing really eventful happened. The only thing that happened on SmackDown, uh, Triple H came out to start the show and he basically he basically came out and he said, listen, um, I don't care where you are in the board, but the only one that makes the decisions around here is me. Because I am creative and all this other stuff. He, he said, listen, I am the, he- I am, he didn't say I'm the head here, but he said, 
He said, if there's any decision making around here, it has to go by me. The crowd the crowd went nuts for this. They, they were all for it, all that. And that was basically it. Okay. So now, okay, I promise you, this is now going to be my opinion on this whole situation. So, uh, number one, people are saying rumors about Triple H and The Rock starting a rivalry. That is not going to happen. Not going to happen. Number one, because Triple H cannot wrestle anymore. He uh, he has a pacemaker inside inside of his his body and his heart, um, so he could, but it's very um, very risky to do that. So that's num- that's number one. He's not going to return in ring. I wish he could because I would love to see The Rock versus Triple H at WrestleMania one last time. If you guys don't remember that promo back, I think it was like 2015, and it's funny because I just recently watched that uh, last week. Uh, they were backstage talking like, "Oh, what if The Rock versus Triple H runs more to- uh, one more time at WrestleMania?" Uh, I believe it was a Ro- Monday Night Raw in Brooklyn. I'm 100 percent sure. But um, anyway, back to the whole thing. Triple H is not going to come out of retirement. It's not going to happen. If it does happen, then oh my god, that's fucking insane. But um, and Triple H already said he was content with his retirement already. He's He's happy that he retired because he's achieved more. He's achieved already what he wanted to and then some. So I don't see Triple H coming out of retirement to go against The Rock. I would love to see that, but I don't think it's going to happen. Highly doubt it. Zero, zero chance of it happen. Um, and even David Meltzer had said that. As much as I, I and I hate David Meltzer, so um, and I can agree with him. Okay, now so so now let's backtrack just a little. So that's the whole Triple H The Rock thing. So let me go ahead and backtrack just a little bit to the press conference here. I'm going to call it a press conference. because Even though they call it WrestleMania kickoff press or something like that. I'll just call it a press conference. We're, we're, so just going to rewind a little bit to the press. Let's say the Triple H thing never happened, right? We're, it's Thursday. The press just ended, right? Here's my take on it. The Rock turning heel, I did not expect that. Um, I don't think they could have gone any other direction with it anyway because the crowd already hated him already in the moment because he stole Cody's spot. But um, they did stress this out on Raw that um, nothing was made official yet. Nothing. Not a single thing was made official. I don't know if I mentioned this in my last podcast or not. I don't know if the po- last podcast episode was before Monday Night Raw or after it, but um, might as well just bring it up anyway. That... Um, Nothing was ever made official. Nothing. Not a single match. The only match that was made official was Bailey versus EO Sky. That was it. That's all we know for WrestleMania. So they said they they basically said, Oh, will he go after Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns? We'll tune into the press conference this this Thursday and we'll find hopefully we'll get some answers. And we did. Cody Rhodes shows Roman Reigns, just like I said. Did I expect this to happen the way it did? No. It still doesn't, and does it still answer the question like, oh, what about what he said on SmackDown? Like, oh, I want to go after you, just not at WrestleMania. It does not answer that question because now he just pushed it aside as he basically pushed it aside as if he never said it. And he was just like, at the main event at WrestleMania, uh, I choose you, Roman. And it's funny because the first thing I thought of was like, wait a minute, but on SmackDown, you said not at WrestleMania. So it still doesn't make sense in a way, but I really don't care because... At the end of the day, we're getting Cody versus Roman Reigns. It's the main event. It's on the poster. The poster looks badass for this. Hopefully, it does not change because The Rock comes in and interferes with it. Now, let me go ahead and speculate here. Go on to all the speculation going on. Oh, there's going to be a tag team match with The Rock and Roman versus Seth and Cody. Uh, Elimination Chamber or WrestleMania Night 1. Let me tell you. First of all, I do not want to see that. I do not want to see this tag team match at all. I don't think we're going to get a tag team match. If we do, it's going to be Elimination Chamber at best. I don't think we're going to get it night one. Because number one, if we do it night one of WrestleMania, it's just it's just going to lose the aura of it. You know, it's just going to like, you know, it's going to lose the feeling like Cody coming out. And I don't know, it just loses the, because he already came out the night before. And then for him to come out night two, it's just, I don't know. And another reason too is Seth's injury. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's not going to happen because Seth, Seth's injured. And he's trying to save save it for WrestleMania. Save his whatever he, the hell he has left in his tank with this injury for WrestleMania. Um, that's another reason why it most likely will not happen. 
Um, another reason why it might not happen uh, is quite frankly because again it loses the mystique of the you know the Rock coming out for the for having his first match in like eleven years you know and a lot of people like to forget like oh he hasn't had a match in eleven years but what about the match with Eric Rowan at WrestleMania what was it thirty two or something like that that he had a WrestleMania match with Eric Rowan but everybody seems to forget that um, ju- I'm just saying I thought I'd throw that out there uh, so. I'm just making. I'm just watching the recording right now as I as I speak because I'm just making sure it's still recording. Hopefully nothing goes wrong here. This is my first time again. My first time recording with this mic, so uh, I don't know how it works using mics, things like that. I don't really know about it. So this is my first time using a mic. Ten years in the making. I can tell you right now. Um, but uh, anywho, um, yeah. So I don't think this is going to happen. Uh, and, and another reason why, I mean, if it does happen, I guess it could build up to a match next year at WrestleMania with Rock and Roman. Do I think we're going to get Rock and Roman at Mania this year? Um, I'm kind of mixed on that, to be honest with you. I mean, I feel like they'll do it next year, but at the same time, it's like they want, uh, the Rock wants to be at Mania this year. So it's like, I don't know. I, a lot of people are saying he could be a, st- a special enforcer in the match or a special guest referee or side with Cody. Now, this is a prediction. I It's not much of a prediction, but something like, oh, it'd be so cool to see this kind of kind of thing. I think it would be really cool if it was Cody versus Roman, night two, main event, right? Rock is in Roman's corner for the match. And Solo and Jimmy get involved, you know. the But, but mind you, The Rock does not get involved in this. The Rock just sits on and watches it. Okay, he sits on and watches. He's a little concerned. He watches this. Now, let's say Cody and Roman, or Cody and The Rock had a conversation backstage without Roman knowing. Right? Let's say they had a conversation backstage. They they talked it out, and then this was all a plan. And I'll get into it being a plan in just a minute. Let's say so. Let's say Solo interferes with Jimmy or whatever. And then The Rock attacks them, and that. Basically sets up, you know, like Roman Reigns. You know, Roman Reigns is like bewildered, like, oh my god, like, wh- what the hell did you just do? Why did you just attack? M- Why did you just attack my cousins? Like, what is? And that leads to a distraction in a way. Cody Rhodes hits the three crossroads, and one, two, three. We have a new undisputed Universal Champion. Which, by the way, they're referring to him as the WWE Champion. So I think they're going to do away with the Universal Championship. And if that's the case, thank God. I hated the Universal Championship since the get-go. I hated it. Ever since they introduced it and they showed how ugly this title looked, thank go- just thank goodness they got rid of this thing. If that is the if this is all true, but if you look at the poster, apparently it's above Roman Reigns' head. It says WWE Champion, so I'm assuming they're doing away with the whole un- undisputed Universal Champion. And thank God they are, even though it's a little obvious. Like one day Samantha Irving's just gonna come out and be like, the uh, she's gonna say the WWE Champion. Everyone's just gonna be like, huh? Isn't he the undisputed champion? But uh, WWE can do whatever the hell they want. They, you know, it's a fictional show. You know it. it it, it, they can just do whatever the fuck they want. It it doesn't matter. So, um, what is go- so now? Now what? So now Cody wins the title. Now what? I think he goes to SmackDown. He has new rivalries with other people. I don't know if I mentioned this in my last podcast, but I uh, he does not have. What else is he gonna do on Monday Night Raw? He's already had a rivalry with Shinsuke. He's had a rivalry with Seth Rollins. He's had a rivalry with the Judgment Day. He's had rivalries with uh. Who else? I know he had a rivalry with a couple other people as well. But uh, there's nobody really... There's no one else really on the roster, on on the Raw roster, he could have a rivalry with. Andrade would be cool, but... Not, but listen, I think... I think, number one, he's winning the, the finish in the story because why would they have him win two back-to-back Rumbles um, all of a sudden just to have him lose it? Number two, um, why... What, like, what else is he going to do on, on Monday Night Raw? And number three, uh, they're doing it because he's going to SmackDown. He's going to SmackDown so he can have rivalries. He can have rivalries with LA Knight. Uh, Randy Orton, I think, is my top rivalry. I would love to see Randy Orton and Cody go at it again. That would be so cool uh, to see those two go at it yet again. 
Um, I think AJ Styles would be cool to see. AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes. Um, let's think of some people that don't really show up. Maybe one per, maybe the OC, maybe t- tag team, tag teams with somebody temporarily or so. I don't freaking know. I'm just throwing out ideas. Bobby Lashley, maybe. I I really don't know. I I know Sheamus when he comes back. Sheamus would be nice. Um, yeah, that would be really cool to see that. Uh, yeah, that's why I think. Cody Rhodes, those are the couple reasons why I think Cody Rhodes is going to finish the story. A lot of people are saying, oh, unify the titles at SummerSlam. It's not going to happen. He's not going to unify, they're not going to unify the titles at SummerSlam. What they're going, because why would you make a title and just a little over a year later unify it again? It doesn't make any sense. I love the, the, having two world championships on two nights. The, the roster is stacked more stacked than ever before. We have more main event stars on 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 the card than ever before. We do not need uh to unify the titles and make it harder for everybody else. We 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 just don't. We we just don't. We just do not unify the titles. Don't. Don't do that. And people are saying, "Oh yeah, finish the story at uh Madison Square Garden because that's where it started." Now, that is a great idea. But, uh, when is the next Madison Square Garden show? Can you imagine, at a live event, Cody versus Roman, and Cody finishes the story, at a live event, in Madison Square Garden. As cool as that would be, I'm pretty sure they would want a lot more people involved in this, a lot more fans involved, and people watching at at home. Now, unless they were to advertise, hey, the one live event that's going to be on, and it's going to be on Peacock, tune into it, you know? If they had done something like that, then that's pretty obvious that Cody was going to finish the damn story, but aside from that, I, it, it deserves to be on, like, WrestleMania. WrestleMania is the biggest night of the of the year, nights, I should say, of the year, um... And you know, by the way, I find it really funny how LA Knight used to be like a top star. Now it just doesn't feel that way anymore. Am I the only one that feels that way? That LA Knight doesn't feel like a top star anymore? I don't know. I just feel like LA Knight is just not the same. He's just... He... he he's lost his... Um, his, his his popularity. I don't know. I mean, he's, people still love him. It's just... I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's... I, I, I really don't know. I don't know. Am I the o- Hopefully, I'm not the only one that thinks this way. Um, hopefully, I'm not alone on it. But, um, yeah. Anyway, back to the whole Cody situation. So, yeah. He's finishing the story this year at WrestleMania. Even though I said it last year. But one day, we're going to look at this and say, shit. This was all worth it in the end. And I said that before, immediately after he lost. Like, I was pretty shocked, first of all. Second of all, um, I basically said, well... He's going to finish the story one day, and when he does, it's going to be so worth it at, at the end of it. And we're going to one day look at it and be like, man, I was mad at the time, but I'm so happy it happened because it was such a great story. So let us all calm down. I promise you Cody Rhodes is going to finish the story. Um, And you already heard Cody say, if I don't win it by 2025, then I'm done. He's like, I don't know what I'm going to, I've, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, like if I do not win it at WrestleMania. Or if I do not finish the story, just in general. So now that so now that we have Roman versus Cody, now everyone's asking, what's next for The Rock? Now at this point, this is the part of the podcast where it's prediction time. Where it's like, okay, what do I think is going to happen next? So I think on SmackDown, I'm not sure if they're going to do anything tomorrow night on Raw. But um, probably, sorry, I just moved my mic just now. Uh, they probably, probably will. Um, I'm not sure what they have planned. But they probably will. Uh, but the main focus here is SmackDown, obviously, because Roman and Rock are there. So, what do I think is going to happen? Uh, I mean, I mean, unless Roman Reigns and Rock show up on Raw, that would be fucking awesome. But I, I doubt it because they advertised it for SmackDown, and it would be a big surprise to see Roman on Raw. I mean, but um, anywho, <sighs> I, I, I don't know. I really don't know what they're gonna do, honestly. I think that the special enforcer or special guest referee could be a thing. I keep thinking of the idea that Rock is going to turn on Roman. And that could set up for next year's WrestleMania with Rock and Roman. Obviously without a title. And it won't piss people off that we have part-timer versus part-timer for a part-time title. Um, Cody Rhodes winning the WWE Championship is just going to bring the prestige back 
back to the the WWE Championship. I really hate how uh, Seth Rollins called it a Hollywood title because um, as much as it may be a Hollywood title right now, wait till Cody Rhodes wins that title. It's finally, finally going to be in the right hand. It's going to be in the hands of a full-time wrestler who is willing to uh, fight for fight for his life to retain the title and the stuff that people are saying like oh people are going to turn on him quicker than he won the title and all this other stuff right it's true that's absolutely true people are going to turn on him absolutely they're going to turn on him eventually cody's going to turn heel at one point in his career i'm not sure when i don't think they should because he's one of the top stars of all time out there he is the next john cena i don't want to hear he already is the next john cena he's like one of the top merchandise sellers out there if you had, if I had told you that in 2012, you would have slapped me in the face and said, "The dashing Cody Rhodes be the be another John Cena." That ain't gonna happen. Uh, you're wrong, pal, because he is the next John Cena. Uh, a lot of people are saying that Roman is the next John Cena. Uh, uh-uh. no, not happening. He had his moments. He he had his moments, and it's over. It's absolutely over. So, uh, yeah, um. So what do I think is going to happen with The Rock and Roman and all this other stuff? They, they most I don't think it's going to be a triple threat. A triple threat is a very bad idea. Number one, Roman and Rock are going to be te- teaming. So basically, it's going to be like a handicap match for Cody. And Cody is another reason. Cody is going to be overshadowed by The Rock and Roman. Cody is going to be the third wheel in this match. And it's just not going to work. It just will not work. If they do a triple threat... At Mania, it's just going to lose the mystique of Rock versus Roman. It's just going to lose the mystique. I would rather see one-on-one matches, Roman versus Cody, Rock versus Roman. I would just rather see it that way. They might do Rock versus Roman night one and Cody versus Roman night two. It better be Cody versus Roman night two because, number one, the last match of the pay-per-view of the entire premium live event is the most important because... Whoever wins that is is the fit head of WWE, man. Like, they're going to be leading WWE into the future. And Cody Rhodes is the future of WWE. I've said this so many times already. Um, I just said it, like, two minutes ago, saying he's the next John Cena. He really is. He's the next John Cena. I'm sorry. I really love Cody. He's awesome in the ring. Uh, he deserves this moment. And I hope he finishes the fucking story at WrestleMania. And he will. He will finish the fucking story at WrestleMania. He need better. I know he will. He said, trust me. And I can guarantee you he will. Now, I, I do not, like I said, I do not see a triple threat in the books. It just doesn't make sense doing a triple threat. Um, the Rock inserting himself in this match, is it's not a good idea. It's not good for business. People are going to boo him out of the building. And I I, I mean, I, I, okay, look, I, I, you want my opinion on it? I don't think it should happen, but let's say in the event that it does happen, as long as Cody goes over, as long as Cody wins the title, I don't care. My friend from work has said the same thing. As long as Cody, I don't care what happens, as long as Cody wins at WrestleMania, I don't care. As long as Cody wins the title and finishes the story, I don't care. I 100% agree with him. As long as the story is complete at WrestleMania, I do not care. What happens? As long as Roman Reigns does not come out victorious yet again at WrestleMania. Because I am sick and tired of WrestleMania ending with uh, a part-timer raising his hand up and all the fireworks going off. I think this WrestleMania will be the greatest, one of the greatest WrestleManias in history. Too bad that CM Punk and Seth Rollins could not be there for Well, Seth Rollins is going to be there, but too bad that. CM Punk can't be there to face Seth Rollins because that is a dream match. Um, I think we'll see it next year at WrestleMania. I would love to see Punk win the Rumble next year or or Gunther, depending on the situation we're in. But the thing is, like people want Gunther to win the Royal Rumble. Here's my opinion on that. I think it could happen, but the problem is that Gunther is already over. And remember, guys, that the Royal Rumble is to get people over. Is to get somebody over. Whoever wins it is going to get over. And we'll get a shot at WrestleMania. And we'll hopefully actually win the damn thing. Um, Now I already know. I know that when Cody won the Rumble. This year and last year. He was already over like a motherfucker. But this was just a way of putting him over even more. 
and I know you're probably thinking, but you just said Gunther is already over, and he can he can win the Royal Rumble and be more over than ever. Sure, true. That that that's absolutely true. But I think Gunther does not need to win the Royal Rumble to be over. Even though I would rather him win the Royal Rumble than win the Elimination Chamber, because the Royal Rumble is a better achievement for your career than winning an Elimination Chamber match. Um, so I think next year we should have Gunther win the Rumble, and then maybe CM Punk win the Chamber. Uh, and then maybe the year after that, have Punk win the Rumble or something like that. But I don't know. It depends on the circumstances. Whoever's over that, that at that point, who's not over, I don't know. So let's not go that far ahead. Let's not let's not take this too far ahead. Um, but yeah, I, I cannot wait for Cody to finish the story at WrestleMania. So yeah, I, I think it was a, a good move to have Cody win back-to-back. Maybe that was the story they were playing all along was having him win back to back and telling that story. So what happens when he finishes the story now? That's my question. What happens when he finishes the story? I don't know. Uh, what's next for Cody? Probably open challenges maybe on Raw or Smack or SmackDown rather. Uh, that would be so cool. We have not seen a world title match on SmackDown in forever. Um, I, I just can't wait for this. I honestly cannot wait to see what happens next i don't know what they're gonna do with the rock like i said special enforcer special guest referee i think is the best thing to go with tag team match not a good idea i do not recommend that uh as cool as it sounds i don't think they should do a tag team match um especially at wrestlemania night one main event wrestlemania night one um, because then it's like, it just ruins the mystique. Like when Cody and Roman come out again, it just doesn't feel the same. Like when Ro- if Roman and Cody come out for the first time at WrestleMania on night two, obviously, um, there's a mystique to it. There's like that, there's like that fe- you get that feeling. They have that look in their face. Like it's just, it's just not going to feel good. It's not going to feel as good as if we see Cody in Roman in two matches. But then you might be saying to yourself. Hey didn't you just the other day say. You wanted to see Roman in two matches. Uh, Yes. And I still want to see that happen. I want to see Roman and Rock on night one. And then Cody in Roman night two. But then you say. Oh but but it ruins the mystique of it. It ruins the mystique. Well. Ru- it ru- it would have ruined it for Cody. Not for Roman. For, for Cody. I think it would have ruined it for Cody. Honestly, I really do. Because you want Cody to go in there more badass than ever. And so is Roman too. You want Roman to go in there as badass as ever. So maybe have him beat The Rock. And it's like, okay, he just dethroned the biggest star of all time. And then have Cody come out the next night and dethrone Roman Reigns. And you can easily put in the history books at that at that moment in time you can put in the history books that the rock could not beat roman reigns but cody rhodes did it that would put cody over like rover if we did that the fact that cody rhodes beat roman but the rock the rock the fucking rock couldn't do it now that right there is an achievement. I, I honestly believe that that is what should happen. Rock versus Roman night one. Cody versus Roman night two. And I say night two because it's a big moment for Cody to finish the story. It is a very important moment that we put this on night two. The night two main event is the most important. Because it is the last match of the, of the event. Of at all it's, it's the the last match it has to be good and i know the rock and roman is a good match but is it good for the future no no it is not it's good for the for the the ratings and the 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 money and all that it's going to draw either way it's going to draw money whether we see cody at mania or not i mean i'm sure people would ask for refunds but still it's still going to draw a lot of money it's going to draw a lot of casual fans a lot of Fan people that are not fans of wrestling, but it's gonna draw them all in and all the money that they're gonna make for this. 
So in conclusion, what do I think is going to happen next? Uh, I don't know. I think they're going to come out on SmackDown and address the whole situation. I don't think Rock is going to attack Triple H. If he does, then there is a very highly likely chance at that point that Triple H will come out of retirement and kick his ass. Or we could at least see a pedigree. At least see Triple H pedigree the shit out of Rock and walk away. I mean, I don't see why not. I don't see why he can't do it. Just just a simple pedigree and just walk away. And you can do a match with Triple H. You just have to be careful. You just have to take it a little slow. Take it very slow. Um, make sure he doesn't take too many big bumps. It is very, very risky, but I probably wouldn't do it. But uh, it's doable. You know, you never say never. I'm not going to say that Triple H can't do it. It's just I don't want to see him do it. I don't want to see him get hurt. Uh, but anyway, that puts an end to this whole Shamil and the review on uh, the press conference or the press or whatever. Um, this is my input. This is what you got out of me. I have no idea what's going to happen next. I think it should be Rock and Roman Night 1 and Cody and Roman Night 2. Cody finishes the story. Roman defeats The Rock. Um, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on The Apester Show. It's going to... Going to take a little bit of getting used to to call it the Apester Show and not wrestling with the Apester. Um, but go ahead and check out my last podcast episode. You may be wondering, how the hell is it called the Apester Show now? Uh, well, check out the last podcast episode and you'll find out why. It's called rest, uh, It's called Welcome to uh, the Apester Show. It was an original name. Uh, it was an original name that I had in mind. It was either the Apester Show or Wrestling with the Apester. And I think I had a couple others too. But the, the top two for me were Wrestling with the Apester and The Apester Show. I should have called it The Apester Show to begin with. But in the first podcast episode I made ever, I basically said that the Wrestling with the Apester could be temporary. And it was. And I would say that The Apester Show, I think, is a permanent thing. From now on, I think this is going to be a permanent name I'm going to keep. I really love this name. It's universal. I can talk about other things. Instead of wrestling, I could talk about video games. I could talk about life itself you know like how's my what my personal life maybe which I, i'm not gonna do that by the way that's not recommended um my girlfriend and i are, have a private life so i don't want to throw the, my life out there you know but th- that's just an example that's just i'm just throwing out examples here instead of just talking about wrestling all the time you know but for now it is wrestling all the time there was only that one podcast episode where i made it was completely talking about something else which was gta 6 trailer one um, which was a cool trailer, by the way. Go ahead and check it out. Um, thank you so much for tuning into this. In the description here below the podcast, I will be putting links to the Ape Squad Facebook page. Uh, that's where I leave latest episodes. Uh, my YouTube videos are also going to be uploaded to that page because I also changed my YouTube. I changed the, the name of it. That's probably the one thing that got revamped the biggest. Like It was like the biggest revamp I did was took out the pictures i put new pictures in and renamed it completely um it is completely just revamped but i will leave a link in the below to the description to the ape squad facebook page that's where i upload latest podcast episodes and latest youtube videos from now on um as well as my youtube channel will be down below now, let's say you're listening to this on Spotify and you want to listen to the YouTube version or maybe you have a friend of yours that does not have Spotify and they want to listen to the YouTube version. Uh, I will leave a link to the YouTube version of the podcast down below, of course, as I always do. And of course, vice versa, if you're listening to it on YouTube and you want to listen to it on Spotify, maybe your friend doesn't like YouTube and they prefer listening to it on Spotify. Uh, the link will be below uh, on the YouTube version to listen to the Spotify version of this. So that is going to wrap everything up here. I'm going to re-listen to this podcast and hopefully everything goes smoothly all to plan. Uh, the mic, I think, will sound good. I did some testing, some videos where I said testing, testing, one, two, three with it just to make sure everything was okay. Adjusting settings and playing around with the mic a little bit. I'll, I'll get used to it after a while. Uh, but uh, but I, I'm looking at it right now and it's like all this sound, like when you're recording a sound, it kind of looks like a... Uh, uh, what is it? You know those? Uh, I forget in the hospital what they're called. When uh the heart the heart rate monitors, it kind of looks like a heart rate monitor, and I keep say, seeing the ones that are like all the way up, like like uh, like that one. See, like it's like a giant line just going across my screen. Hopefully that's not like deafening. Hopefully I don't make you guys deaf with, the, with any any parts of this video. But I am relatively close to the mic right now. Maybe I'd say about a, about a foot away from it. Um, 
But again, that's going to end this podcast episode anyway. Thank you for joining me on the Apester Show, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, guys.